Now, second, we shall reflect the uh, suffering of uh, suffering uh, hunger goes rams. So, uh, when we again hear the uh, the three types of hunger goes yesterday, yeah, uh, physical obstruction, the condition of the body, and how hard to find the food, inner condition, even to find the food, how hard to get in, and then third is food food obstruction. It's like even you get into the body. Uh, it becomes like a flame, burn everything. So just hearing this kind of a story, how it feel, kind of make us feel miserable, un- uncomfortable. So this suffering, whatever being experienced, again, is created by its own causes. The cause of this hunger goal suffering is a, a stinginess and attachment. So again, think of in every day, out of uh, motivation, stinginess, and attachment, how much we accumulate non riches did. No, we don't have any confidence we're not going to happen that in our future life. But we have uh, plenty of cause to experience these things. Uh, just think about uh, when we, a few days ago, took Mahind precepts, uh, we kind of uh, skipped the dinner. Then next early in the morning when we did self practice, how much we hearing the sound of the stomach <laughs> kind of no? Just one night, yeah. <laughs> one night we skip dinner, morning also kind of make a lot of noise, you know. This poor guy's whole life <laughs> without drink or eat, they just imagine the sound is make a threat and frighten them, them you know. <laughs> One hungry goes next to me and make a huge, like a thunderstorm, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so this causes like a uh, out of attachment, stinginess. Then you're committing non virtues mentally, vocally, and physically. So in that way, we have enough cause to experience this in one of our future lives. I'm not going to make it scary, you know. If you, uh, you you don't need to be frightened if you don't uh, commit this sound to yourself. So you have to check yourself. Yeah? We have to check ourselves. Do I really accumulate any non virtues out of this genius attachment or not? First you have to check. This is a really important meditation. This is really kind of honest to yourself. You not just make things up. If you think, oh, I don't have any stinginess, I don't have any attachment, so I never accumulate uh, any, then you're not really frightened. There's a scarce no exists at all. If you these things I have committed, it's no point of pretending I, I'm all right. I'm Superman, you know. I know these things not going to attack on me. It's not going to work. This will catch you up sooner or later. So in order to to prevent that, even you committed, this is the opportunity again. While we have this human perfect, perfect life, we have the opportunity here the ready dharma, and then we have a good instruction. So while we have all this uh, right equipment, uh, right facility, no need to scared about it. This is a great opportunity to get rid of this, whatever you committed. So in that point of view, again, we have to bring great sense of joy. Even though I have a loss of negative karma, I may have experienced the future, but unfortunately, it's like a born human, I receive this Dharma. How many out there who have the same evil worth? Uh, these people don't have the opportunity uh, right yet to listen to Dharma. So these people are going to be really feel, experience it. that way you feel more compassion to them. And then you kind of grateful yourself, I can free this. So what I'm free, that's the reason we say like, uh, every time when you practice Dharma, you must combine with the Bodhisattva, so important. Like uh, say, I have uh, so many courses to reborn the hungry goals, so I need to purify. The reason I purify is not just simply to free myself. If you just uh, simply free yourself, it, either it's going to be a small person's practice or medium person's practice. I'm really doing this to purify myself to attain Buddhahood. Then I have all these other people who don't have opportunity right now. So if you combine that into the Bodhicitta, then every practice becomes like a minor practice. Yeah? So this is so important every time when you practice, don't think I'm doing this for my own uh, benefit. Rather, I'm doing this to attend Buddhahood, sake or sentient being. Combining with the bodhicitta, then every practice that you perform you, is a path to get full enlightenment. Yeah? 
So that's the second uh, the suffering of suffering or hunger ghost realms. And then the third, <coughs> the suffering of suffering animal realms. Uh, uh, again, with you mentioned yesterday, a general like a suffering of animal, like a, if you look in the ocean or wild, uh, like I say, how many domesticated, how many they have to suffer? Fear every minute. This, what should they live, live with a fear? No? Most of I think, let's say, like, uh, under the ocean and the wall, fear. Little domesticated have less fear because they're pretty secure. Yeah? But still, they have uh, no uh, uncertainty what is going to happen. Like uh, when you, like uh, I'm no farmer, but my parents uh, came from farmer background, uh, animal farmer in the back in Tibet. But that in Tibet is not bad as uh, here in the Western farmers, because in the Tibet they also there's a, a kind of a uh, abattoir, killed animal, abattoir. Yeah, they have all this uh, system. But a good thing is like uh, the what you call the calf. They always keep with the mom all the time. But in, in here, just if you look, you know, when the calf born, within a few weeks they're separating. How much is sad? Just think about it. We just treat them as like a, just really not sentient beings. Just, so how much is sad the calf separating the mother and how much mother suffering of the separating. So it looks very nice in the green grass and they're just having, but in China they're losing every time their calf. No? So then sheep also same they can hardly see sheep and mother and the baby there together. You know? So that's it's not only just uh, just taking milk and killing them, also how much separation and anxiety is in their in their life. This is the reality. So one hand we say it's a human so cruel to commit these things, another hand also animal has a karma. You know? So it's like both is kind of problem. It's a and human who Mistreat is a decorated nuclear karma. Animal who I'm not saying they deserve, I'm not talking about they deserve to be that because they have a negative karma. That's the reality. Deserve is not the right word, it's a cruel. But it's a karma. You know? Karmically, they experience that kind of things. So this karma is not just, a, uh, we need to know what karma to have to go through that difficulty is the ignorance mind. Like out of ignorance, Whatever you committed non virtues mentally, vocally, physically, end up we're going to suffer in that. So now we're not talking about someone else, just think about ourselves. Every day, out of ignorance, how much we accumulate negative karma, mentally, vocally, and physically. So we have enough cause, soon after we death, to rebound the state. No? So I'm not saying you have it, I have it, I'm not talking. This is just talk. Then we have to, the only person who's going to find out whether I got this or not is yourself. So this reason, again, you, when you meditate, to reflect. Like, uh, even you can't remember that far away from you, but just think of it since this morning, after now, do I have ache in the ignorance of my mind first? If you've got an ignorance of mind, out of that, how much I did mistake mentally, vocally, and physically. All this mystery they are committed is installed in our mind. Yeah, installed in our mind. Then one day condition comes, this very, that negative karma they are committed, and manifest in the form of that beings. So when I manifest in that form, then I'm going to go through the same suffering what that I'm seeing right in front of me, these animals. You know? So I've been that person or being many times in the past. So future are still going to become back in that because I have all the seed. So now, in that, when you realize that, again, it makes you frightened, makes you scared. But one thing fortunate is like, uh, I have an opportunity, remedy, I have an antidote. So that's the ant that's best antidote is the Dharma. Therefore, I must practice Dharma again. You know? So this way, because uh, like uh, people say, uh, Dharma practice is very hard. It's true, it's very hard. You need to be so many requirements to practice Dharma. One requirement is like, uh, you need to have enough merit first.
compared to Dharma. If you don't have enough merit, even you know Dharma is precious, still you're not really going to practice Dharma. That's one lacking. Second is like uh, to practice Dharma, we really recognize the seriousness of our negligence. If you don't realize your seriousness, you're not going to be that strong interested in practice Dharma. You know? So combination of the merit, realizing seriousness of this, and then this together makes much easier to practice Dharma. Yeah? So that's the second, third, sorry, something of animal realms. Then on a, uh, so that's a completed the suffering of suffering, yeah. So if you think about suffering of suffering, it really brings you a great sense of feel sadness there. So this great sense of feel sadness is a great cause of the develop renunciation or bodhicitta, or it helps us to humbleness, yeah. Humble it makes you very humble. Uh, now second is like a suffering of change. Then yesterday I mentioned like a uh, uh, God beings uh, due to the virtuous power of the virtues, they may born with everything kind of a, what you call the ready. Like as soon you elected prime minister, you got all the facilities. Yeah, same thing God realm. So as soon you become God realm, already there everything. Then not only that. Whatever you want, there's no problem whatsoever. You can get everything what you want. Instant you can get. That's a God realms quality. Because this is God realms, what, what reason they got everything when they're born and they get everything while they're alive is a karmic result. So karmic result is like a why they get everything and then get instantly is the power of the virtues. In the previous life, they did so many virtues. Due to the powerful virtues, without the renunciation, bodhicitta, just the virtues so powerfully, they have got everything. And then, end of the life, because they're so distracted, yeah, so get distracted, and then they run, just life is just wasted because they got everything. Then, time of the death, they're saying like a five major signs and the five minor signs comes. Then there's so much uh, what we call that. Uh, uh, fear. So this fear comes from when he or she commit virtues with such an ego mind. So ego playing the last part of the suffering of fear. Virtuous part is playing the rest of the, until that time. Since born until the affair, virtuous. So both has a cause, result. Make sense or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, because ego kind of help you to make a bigger, like a uh, sometimes, uh, I'm not sure in the West, in the East they have uh, some kind of loss, ego playing lots of dharma. Say. One person says, uh, oh, I can offer uh, 100 candles. The next family can go and say, I can offer 200 candles. <laughs> no? Out of it. The both is a virtuous, you know, mm -hmm. but it's a very much associated with the ego mind. Mm -hmm. you know? In the West, I'm not sure that much about the offering part, but there has a lot of education system. He knows uh, about this book. I'm going to read in the next book, and then not two books, then more than one. You know, that kind of ego comes. So reading the Dharma or practice Dharma, but because ego is involved there. So one part, reading is to gain knowledge, another ego is the kind of makes you suffering. You know? So it's kind of a, you try to make a nice uh, chai, but you put uh, sugar and salt together. Then and you get uh, this two sort of kind of testing, you know. Neither you can say it's a salty tea or sugar tea, you know. Put two things in there. You know? 